the day they bring me proof against Bishop Barros, then I will speak. There is not a single piece of proof against him. Everything is slander. Is that clear? Well, it seems everything wasn't clear for Pope Francis, because just days after making that comment, he was forced to send the Vatican's top sex crimes expert to Chile. The investigation targets Bishop Juan Barros and whether the church official covered up the crimes of a pedophile priest. And while the Vatican says new evidence has emerged, critics have lambasted the Pope, saying he doesn't understand the depth of the crisis in South America. Well, let's go to our panel now. In London is the president of the National Secular Society UK, Keith Porteous Wood. And we also have Jack Valero. He's the founder of Catholic Voices, a project aiming to improve the church's rep representation in the media. And finally, in Rome, Christopher Lamb, a correspondent for The Tablet, an international Catholic news weekly. I thank you all for joining us. Christopher Lamb, let, let me begin with you. Some see this as damage limitation from the Vatican because of the embarrassment of supporting Barros, and eventually they've sent this investigator. Is that how it played out? Well, I think it was tough action that the Pope needed to take in this case. As you report said, um, the Pope had upset victims by saying that accusations that Bishop Barros was accused of a cover-up were uh, calumny. And therefore, to send Archbishop Shikluna, who is really the toughest or most credible investigator on abuse that the Church has, was um, a a bit of a volt fast to be honest but b it was the tough action that i think the pope needed to take to get a grip of this uh, story the other thing that has developed today is that uh, a letter was sent to the pope in 2015 detailing some of the claims um, against barros and detailing the abuse that barros is said to have witnessed um, so this is a this is an issue. This is a, a, a case that is that is kind of spiraling out of control a bit mm -hmm. for Francis. So I think that the sending of Shikluna was absolutely necessary, and I think does show that the Pope um, is willing to take action. All right. So so Keith, the Pope twice rejected Barros's resignation. He tried to stop others from, from getting Barras to resign. He defended Barros very recently, saying there's no evidence. And even if Keith. This has been damage limitation by sending Shikluna. This guy is the gold standard. He's the best investigator around, and the Pope's taking this seriously. Should we be giving credit where it's due? He's doing something about it right now. Well, I think we all agree that it's damage limitation, but I'm afraid uh, I have history uh, with Archbishop Shikluna. Uh, when I, after a great deal of effort, uh, was helping the... Uh, UN Committee for the Rights of the Child to actually take on the Holy See uh, over child abuse about five years ago. Um, the person uh, they sent to, to speak for the Holy See, uh, one of the two spokespersons, was uh, Archbishop Secluna. And the evasion uh, that, uh, that I witnessed and the hostility subsequently when the committee uh, produced its report asking for rather reasonable things like immediately removing all known and suspected child abuse uh, abusers from assignment and re referring them to law enforcement and ensuring transparent sharing of all archives. Um, all they got back from the Vatican and the Holy See was uh, an attack and I think impertinence. Okay. I mean, that should have been a to-do list that they didn't right. need to uh, start a commission. OK, so, so, Jack, does Keith make a good point that even the guy who is sent now to help combat abuse and finally put an end to this and investigate this, he might have a not-so-great resume in Keith's, in, in, in Keith's eyes? Is that, is that fair? I, I don't think so. I think he's the best you can find. He's not afraid of telling truth to power and uh, of anyone or anything. I, I think there was a particular thing with the United Nations uh, Rights of the Child Committee who had written his re their report before he actually arrived and didn't take account of the things that he told them, which was not very well done then. But I think if we put that aside, he's a very uh, particular, very meticulous man. He will definitely investigate. I think the Pope believes Barros to be innocent, but obviously he's realized that that's not enough. It's not enough for him to think he's innocent. 
he must, you know, some impartial person must go there and leave no stone, stone unturned. So I, as a Catholic, feel very happy that somebody has gone which is in, who is impartial and who can ask all the people, people and let us know uh, after, after investigation what the situation is. I think the situation of the church in Chile is different from the situation of the church in Argentina where the Pope is, comes right. from. Uh, there's a lot more clericalism and many more problems. So I think that the Pope perhaps needs to do more there, which he hadn't realized before. Right. Christopher, so sending yeah. Chiclun, I think, is a good right. move. Christopher Lamb, just sort of stepping back and trying to contextualize this for the moment, because you hinted in your first answer that something big is afoot, right? Just remind us. So we have Burris being accused of covering up the crimes of a pedophile priest. That priest called Reverend Fernando Caradima, sanctioned by the Vatican in 2011. Just remind us of how toxic that situation was with Caradima and just what he did. Well, Caradima is accused of abuse of a number of, a number of minors, a number of, of, of children. Uh, Caradima was a, or is a, was a hugely charismatic figure in Chile and a mentor to a number of the bishops including to Bishop Barros. Now, in the latest story that's been produced today about, by AP, uh, Barros himself is, is accused of having some sort of relationship with Karadima, and Karadima uh, possibly abusing Barros. So it, it's, a, it's a hugely toxic and difficult situation uh, there in, in Chile. When Pope Francis appointed Barros to the Diocese of Osorno, uh, which is where he is currently, uh, there were protests outside the cathedral for the ordination uh, service. Uh, this has been something that has been a problem for Francis um, for some time. And I think that whilst this pope is widely seen as a, as a very popular, uh, reform-minded uh, pope who has won, won the support of the vast majority of Catholics, on this issue, uh, which is such a toxic issue, it is threatening to, to cause problems for this pope. Um, he is the Teflon pope in many ways, but this issue this ha has the potential to kind of uh, pierce through some of that Teflon. Right. So, Jack, is that accurate? Has this maybe put a yes. dent in the Teflon? Has this hurt the church and Pope Francis and this kind of, you know, this angelic image that he's had across the world among Catholics and, and non-Catholics as well? Yes, perhaps he has, and, and I think that, I mean, I think personally within him, he's definitely against all child abuse and he's for zero tolerance and he wants what everybody wants, you know, the three things, that this that never happens again, that the victims are recompensed, that the, the uh, uh, perpetrators are punished and they go cover up, but, but is he, is he oh, not uh, at all. serious enough to do something about it? And, and therefore, what he, he needs to do a number of things, like he needs to make sure that the commit commission that was set up for the purpose works again, is, is in a bit of a hiatus at the moment. He needs to look at specific places where this is a big problem, like Chile, where it has been a big problem, mm -hmm. and he needs to take more action. Okay. But so, I think this could be the beginning, okay, the this beginning could of be something. The, okay, interesting point. So, Keith, right, when, when, when Jack said very specifically this pope is against child abuse, you shook your head in disagreement and had a wry smile. You can't tell me the pope is pro-child abuse, can you? Well, he hasn't done very much about it, and we are even before he was pope. If we go back to the much-respected uh, Bishop Accountability website, uh, we will actually discover uh, that he was uh, saying that uh, there was no uh, problem in his diocese. Um, and yet, uh, there were four named uh, uh, people who were abusers and evidence uh, uh, abuse victims, and there's evidence that he knowingly or unwittingly, I quote, slowed victims in their fight to expose and, pr and prosecute them. Um, they sought the Cardinal's help and none of them received it, and that's been confirmed by his former spokesperson. So he's got form. I saw over a period of four years what happened at the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child, and it's very clear the, uh, with the hostility uh, and, and impertinence of the exchanges there. That, and you just can't imagine that that could happen without the, per the Pope, the new Pope's personal direction. And then you have this commission, which Jack's 
generously admitted is basically dead in the water, uh, with the two only victims on it having departed in a complete dis disgust. Uh, Peter from NAPAC actually said that he begged the Pope to attend one of their meetings, but what did he do? He spent the whole day watching a procession of coffins. Uh, so, I mean, it really is terrible. The, the tribunal that was set up was done suspiciously soon after the first person was convicted uh, for child endangerment in the States. And it was effectively providing an alternative route to avoid those people going through mm -hmm. uh, the okay. criminal process, okay, so let me the very ask... thing the, the UN asked for. Uh, okay, fair enough. So, so, Jack, you would, I guess, respect that this comes from a good place because Keith, Keith cares about children not being abused by, by priests, right? Would you accept... Yeah, so and we all care about Would them, you accept course. and respect his skepticism that... Even this pope, even Pope Francis, the reformer, the superstar pope, is not doing enough. Well, what is enough? It's never enough until it's sorted. I mean, we've seen that structures of power are the problem. I mean, we've seen it in Hollywood. We've seen it in premiership clubs. When there is power which is unchecked, uh, then these things happen. And uh, this is what happened in Chile, in that parish. This is what's happened in other places. One thing is what has gone wrong. And the other thing is whether this pope in his heart wants to sort it. I think he does want to sort it, and therefore he has sent this man to investigate. Once this has happened, lots more needs to happen, but it's going in the right direction. I don't believe that it is a lost cause, as, as, mm. as okay. Keithney seems to imply. Okay, so no, it's going, it's going, we're doing things about okay, it. Okay, so Christopher, in terms of public opinion, and this is where it gets a little bit murky now, because everybody's talking about it right now, and everybody was upset that the pope seem to maybe be insensitive to alleged victims, um, initially by defending the man and saying there's no evidence. Now he sent an investigator. It's, it's locked into a kind of inevitability now, isn't it? Because anything other than Barros maybe being found guilty would be unsatisfactory, right? Well, I think then it's going to need to be some action. I mean, Archbishop Shikluna's investigation is likely to report you know, sometime in the, in, the, in the next few months. We probably won't see the outcome of that report and it will be kept between the Pope and, and Shikluna. But I think this is something that the Pope needs to uh, get ahead of, get a grip on. Um, I think there was a distinction, though, to be made between uh, what the Pope is accused of in this case and what other bishops have been accused of. The Pope is ac being accused here of being insensitive to victims, to not making the needs of victims a high enough priority. Now, he's not being accused of a specific cover-up, but he's being accused of insensitivity to victims. Now, that's where the church has now got to deal with the sex abuse scandal. It's moved from the, the, the cover-up area, which of course still are cover-ups, but it's moved much more to a situation where are you as a pope, as the Vatican, dealing with taking this issue seriously enough, taking the needs of victims seriously enough, and responding. And that's where the Pope has, has seems to have fallen down or fallen short, yep. or okay. seems to have a blind spot. Right. Uh, but Good I think argument. that with this case, with the Barros case, the Pope does need to, uh, to, to respond, take, to take action. And I think the Shikluna move uh, is, goes some of the way to de dealing with that. We'll have to see what Shakuna comes back with and what the Pope decides to do. Of course, we won't be privy to the details of the inquiry, though. Right. OK, Keith, I know you want to come in. I'm completely out of time, so I'm going to give you 20 seconds, if you don't mind, if you could keep rigidly to that. 20 seconds. Go, Keith. Well, I think the, the Pope, uh, is, his, his record is exposed by his willingness to support Barras and also Cardinal Pell, who's... Uh, reputation was well known. Anybody would uh, steer away from those people if they were of uh, right mind. OK, so let's try and see what happens when Shikluna actually goes and, and what comes out of it. Gentlemen, it's been good to talk to you uh, about a very important topic, Keith Porcheswood, Jack Valero and Christopher Lamb. I thank you all for joining us on The Newsmakers.